Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In this video, we're going to take a second look at the waveform. We're going to connect it to the Arduino. I wanted to throw in some double E prom functionality in this too, but I'm going to hold that off for C. In this one, we're just going to show how to transmit data from the Arduino up to the Nexion, and then send a little bit of control from the Nexion back down to the Arduino. Okay, for this, I'm not going to use any delays. I'm going to use millisecond functions and then step through things that way. And our initial delay, or the, the delay we're going to use, is a 50 millisecond delay. And I've got that set up as a variable here. And then we need to keep track of where we are in the world of milliseconds. So we're going to store, we we'll need to be a long, because milliseconds on the Arduino are a long. So we've got a variable called current milli, and it's set to zero. We're going to be working in radians for this because we're going to send a sine wave up to the waveform and we'll have to counter for that, so radian count. These variables will make sense as I go through. Up count is going to be equal to 1. And then when we get data back from the, from the next, and we'll, we'll be followed. The data that's received is sometimes followed by 0FF, so I just put this on there all the time. Since we're not actually going to use this for this example. And then I use the variable data from display in most of my videos. I'm going to start two serial ports, one for the local monitor and one for the next display. Now if the current milliseconds is greater than the current milli, which we're going to set equal to milliseconds, which I didn't do, I need to do that right here. So if, it's, if milliseconds is greater than current milliseconds, which will be instantly because we're going to set it here and it's just going to keep counting, plus the delay length, which is 50 milliseconds. So after 50 milliseconds, it's going to run this. And then once it's done running this, we're going to set it equal to milliseconds again. So every 50 milliseconds, it's going to complete this. We've set the radian count initially to zero. And so we're going to add 1 to it because the up count is equal to 1. I could have put radian count plus equal up count, but I didn't for this because I wanted it to be clear. If the radian count is greater than 63, then we're going to set it back to 0. And that's just a function you need to create the sine wave. I'll put a link here up in the upper right to a video I made on that. Then we need to convert that integer into a float. And we're going to divide that radian count by 10. The sine function, or sin, however you want to call it, needs to have a value from 0 to 6.2. And that's kind of where I got this 63. So we'll divide it by 10 to make it a range of 0 to 6.2. We're going to multiply it by 100 to get the range to be a larger range, because what comes out of this is a, is a value of negative 1 to 1. So in other words, the range that comes out of this function right here is negative 1 to 1. But it's not a straight range, it's more of an exponential change. We're going to multiply that times 100 to make the range negative 100 to 100. And then to make it positive, we're going to add 120. So the range will be 20 to 220. And then we're going to send that value up to the next. At this point, I'm going to run it so you can see what I'm talking about. I need to go over how I have the Nexion display set up before I show it to you. I'll run this in debug mode in a minute. What I have is I have the waveform itself. I have this button variable to take me to page 1, and then there's a button on page 1 to take me back to page 0. I have the slider, which we'll be using later, and the slider is tied to this. But for right now, we're just sending data up to the waveform, and I'm going to display it. i run it in debug now. I'm going to start collecting the data. And you can see we get a nice waveform. And these are gradients of 20. It comes in at 20, just like I said, 20 to 220. So 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 20, 40, 60, 80, 200, and 220. So we're getting a real nice signal in. And if I come over here, you can see that the data is coming in add 1, which the device ID is 1, the channel is 0, and then the data that we're trying to plot. That's a good way to test this and a good way to connect the Arduino. 
if you were doing it from the connection itself, you would just put this line add. You could have a timer and this value could count up and down and you could do pretty much the same thing. But I wanted to tie it to the Arduino for some future projects we're gonna be doing. We're gonna make a change now so that we can send a value back from the connection to the Arduino and change this waveform. So on this slider, on this slider up here, when I release it, it's going to print the value that's over here. So it's going to send a 1 right now. But on the touch move, we update wherever this is, we're going to update this value with the value of the slider. Actually, we're going to update the text with the value of the slider using the cove command or convert command. We're going to take the slider value, HO value, and turn it into text. The slider itself, I have a min and max values of 1 and 9, so we're not making much change at all. But it just allows us to send the, the value of 1 through 9 back to the Arduino. And I'm going to go back to the Arduino and show you how we capture that. You should be able to download all this code from the Cheap Controls website if you're confused or you want to just load it in and follow along. But if Serial 2, which is the port coming from the connection, has data available, it's only going to be a single character. It's going to be a 1 through a 9. And it's going to come through as a string. So the, the ASCII code is 31 for a 9, or for a 1, up to 39 for a 9. So we're just going to take that ASCII code and turn it into an integer. So if there's data available, we're going to collect it, store it in data from display. We're going to turn it into an integer and store it in this upcount variable. And originally we set upcount equal to 1. If you look up here, every time through this loop, we're, we're adding another value to the radiant count. So we're counting up to 63 quicker if we, send, if we make this value larger. And counting up quicker will cause the waveform to change its shape. And we'll do that here in a test in a minute. But back down to here, we reset the data from display, and that's all we really need to do. So that way the next time through, it's still data from display is still is set back to nothing. So I'm going to upload this. Okay, so here now we have our waveform going. And we have it set at 1, just like it was before, and it looks the same. But as I increase this, now it's gone much faster. If I move it down here, the change is less extreme. If I go back to one, we're back to where we started. Where well, this can really come in handy is if we spread this out even more. So we'll go back to the Arduino real quick. So where I, if I have this, if I count up to 630 instead, That'll give us more steps to reach that 6.2. So we'll have another decimal place here, but we have to divide it by 100. So that gives us a two decimal places instead of one. So instead of 6.2, it'd be 6.20. And now when we run it, you'll see that the waveform can get really wide and be really narrow. As you can see, it's changed now. We're still getting the sine wave form, but it's a lot wider because it's more steps to get up to this peak and more steps to get down. But as we move the slider, it will get more narrow. And the only time we do it, the only time we change the graph is on the release. So when I move it, I'm changing it in the text box over here, but it doesn't actually go into effect until I release the button. Now it should be faster. And then slower. So the point of this video was to show you how to take a value and send it up to the connection to be read out on the waveform. And the main command is this command right here. What we're doing is we're adding, because that's the command, 
and the ID of the device of the waveform itself, the channel number, which you can have more than, more than one channel, you can have up to four channels on this, and then the value. And you don't have to escape it out because it's a value, followed by three FFs. You could send that over and you could, you could do this anyway. I mean, you could just have a counter counting up and it would plot it just fine also. I just thought it would be neat to throw in this sine wave because in the next video, I'm gonna load it into double EEPROM. Because I am gonna go ahead and do one more thing on this just to show you what happens when we switch pages. We'll get this form going a little quicker. Now it goes up and down. It's reading it out quickly. If I go back to this page, go back, go up and down. You can see it starts over. It doesn't hold the data. Let's do it again. Go to page one, go back to page zero, and it's starting over. Not sure why that's starting straight and it's making me move this. But we'll get that cleaned up for the next video also. But you can see the gist of it. We're sending data from the Nexion or from the Arduino to the Nexion and plotting it. And then just for a wrinkle, I threw this where we can send it back. Let's go back to the Arduino real quick to review. So it's a pretty simple program here. We have our radian count, which is just a counter. It, it's just an integer that counts from 0 to 630. It started off, we had it counting to 63 and then it resets. In this case, it's actually gonna to go to 629. I probably should have this if it's greater than 621 or something like that. And then the float, we change it into a float by dividing it by 100, which gives us our range of zero to 6.2. And then the sine wave takes that radian value that we've converted to it and turns it into a sine wave. And then we multiply it by 100 and add 120 to get it to be a positive integer in a range of 20 220. And then we just take that value and we send it up to the next and followed by the four FFs. While this is happening, we're also looking for data from the next display. And when we get it, we store it in the data from display, we turn it into an int, add it to the up count, and then we reset data from display. And this value here goes into here and sets the speed at which we display the sine wave or which the range that the sine wave makes it fatter or narrower, depending on what that up count is set at. Now in the next video, I'm going to do something with the internal EEPROM to try and hold the value and keep it going even when, the, when, even when we switch pages. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.